Hey guys, we are on day six of writing your fairy tale. Last day, but don't worry, you still have tomorrow and Friday to work on it. If you are not completely finished, you will not turn in the story until Friday. So, um, today, you are going, we're focusing on, the video says conclusions because those are kind of the main parts of a narrative you're supposed to focus on. However, we're going to be focusing more on the resolution or the ending of your story. Conclusions are more for essays. Resolutions are for stories, right? And we are telling a story. We're telling a fairy tale. Now, I was going to retype all of this and make it cute, but I figured work smarter, not harder, right? And I found this really awesome website that just has nine ways to end a story. So there are good ways to end stories. Um, this is by Pointer. Um, so here are some different strategies you can use. I'll tell you which ones you can and can't use on this. Some of them don't apply to the type of story you're writing. And then they also don't mention the main one that I think is awesome. So anyway, closing the circle, the first one, which is where the ending reminds you of something by returning to an important place or reintroducing a key character. So I watched Sons of Anarchy. I'm not encouraging you to go watch it. I'm just going to give you a little something from it. There's this girl and she's kind of a motif because she repeats herself. She comes through over and over again and she's symbolic of something. Um, <clears throat> the, the writer was an English major and he just loves symbolism. So there's a lot of it throughout the story. There's also symbol of the crow that's at the very beginning um, it's kind of a motif too, because it shows up throughout, but then they're both at the end. So there's this homeless woman that's kind of shown throughout the show, but it's never stated what her purpose is. She'll just always be in the background, um, kind of when something terrible is happening and you just have to draw or when moments of healing are needed and you have to draw your own conclusions about what that character means. And the main characters interact with her a little bit several times, um, one day, the main character who's being made out to be a monster, and he believes he's a monster, helps this woman. Um, and you can tell she's, like, eternally grateful for it and potentially an angel. Anyway, um, closing the circle. So it comes back and reintroduces kind of the purpose for everything. It, it ties it back around, okay? Well, not ties, but it closes the circle um, and kind of explains what that was. The tie back, the ending connects to some odd or offbeat element earlier in the story. So my mom taught me this when I was little, and I thought she was a wizard. Anytime we'd watch a movie, she could predict the end. She was like, oh, this, this, and this are going to happen. I'm like, how do you know that? Or she'll say, oh, that's important. And it was a movie I had seen. And I was like, how do you know that that was important? That was so random. And she was like, exactly. If there is ever, and maybe you've noticed this, and maybe some of you were like me, and you may subconsciously know, but you don't really recognize. If there's ever something random in a movie. Now, my dad still can't. <laughs> Goes right over his head. He's a very smart man. He doesn't pick up on details. Um, Like, I remember we were watching the movie The Judge. Now, that one I do recommend you watch. Um. Robert Downey Jr. and Robert De Niro, I believe. No, Robert De Niro's not in it. A different famous Robert, isn't he? I can't think of his name right now. He's wonderful. He's the judge. Anyway. Um, I'm stuck on trying to think of which, who that is. Um, anyway. There's a baseball glove shown randomly in the middle, and they focus and zoom in on it, and you're like, what is the significance of a baseball glove? What does that have to do with this movie? And then later it comes back and you find out why it showed us that. So if there's ever a detail that you're like, mm, that was completely unnecessary for them to put in the movie, it's going to be important because there's a reason they put it in there. They're not just going to waste the time and the space and the writing. They're not just going to come up with an idea. Let's just put this random thing in there for no reason. There's always a reason in writing. Okay. Um, the time frame. So you could have a TikTok structure. Um, the end of the story, you decide what should happen or what should happen last. So it's just, um, right, you get a time frame like the character has three days to make this happen. Then at the end of the three days, what happens? Or the space frame, the character has to get to the other side of the country and then this will happen. 
How long does it take them? The story ends when they make it, right? When they meet their destination. The payoff. So it's saying this does not necessarily have to be a happy ending, but at least a satisfying one. You have to let us know whether good or bad, what happens, and it leaves really no room for the imagination, which we actually crave as readers. We want to know what happens. Cliffhangers. That's the one that's not on this list that I think you should use. Um, cliffhangers are so good, but they, oh, they just, sometimes I hate movies or books because they're ending in cliffhangers because I'm like, no! That was loud. My roommate's probably like, what the heck? Um, I want to know. I want to know what happened, right? I want to know if they got together. I want to know if they actually died. I don't like that you just, you know, just went to black. I don't, I just... You just, the screen's gone and the credits come up and you're like, what happened? So anyway, cliffhangers, you can use one. I'm telling you, you can use one. I think that should be on this list and it's a great way, but that is not the payoff. The payoff is we know some way or another, it's a relief to know what happened, whether it's good or bad. It, it, we're not guessing anymore. We know how the story ends. Okay, the epilogue requires you to actually go back and write an epilogue telling us what happened later, like what happened after. They're super wonderful for stories where they want to end on a really dramatic note. And then the epilogue may say three months later, or it may say five years later, and it tells you where those characters are in life. Super cool. We're not going to do it for a story this short, though. but I highly recommend you do one if you were to write a novel. Um, problem and solution. So it presents us with a po problem, right? The story's over when we find the solution. Um, the apt quote, let's see, some characters just begin endings capturing, oh, that's summarizing. We're not doing that one. Okay. And look to the future. This is like the epilogue, same thing, except in the story, right? It probably starts on a new chapter and we'll say, three days later, like the Spongebob thing, except that wasn't very good, but you know what I'm talking about, right? And it'll tell you what happened from there on out. So um, just tells you what happens in the future. So good website. You can Google it if you need to. Um, I will actually, I'll post the link on your, on your Schoology so you can see it. I'm not going to make you watch that though. Let me know if you need help. Remember, you have two more days to turn this in, but you do have work the next two days. Okay, so it, it's kind of a lot of work. So you need to make sure that you really have your essay completely finished, maybe just a couple of final touches tomorrow and Friday. Okay, good luck, guys. Let me know if you need help.